Well, that was an interesting choice by Jim Schwartz. I leave it to Jim Schwartz to go out his way. <laughs> I mean, uh, I wouldn't expect anything less from Jim Schwartz. Like, he's a different dude. He's just a different dude. I think he's uh, widely misunderstood by the Philadelphia fan base. And sometimes I think he's misunderstood maybe by the fan bases outside of Philadelphia that think we just hate Jim. Most of us recognize that Jim Schwartz was a very good football coach. With that said, you know, it's going to get real interesting because it leads to a very interesting conversation now about why Jim Schwartz walked away. And might he have been covering up a lot of shortcomings by a certain GM in the front office of Philadelphia. All right, y'all. Let's talk. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whenever it is you get around to watching this, once again, guys, Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. Today's topic, Jim walks away into the sunset, guys. Jim Schwartz is gone. There's been a lot of speculation from Philadelphia Eagle fans about if this day was going to come. We all, some people, I won't say we all, but some people suspected that he could be fired. I didn't think that that was a very likely scenario, um, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't see him quitting. Uh, it makes a little more sense in the context of when you see some of the moves on the, on the roster, but we'll get into head coaching, can or not head coaching, but we'll get into defensive coordinator candidates in a separate video. But there are guys like Burke on this team that are disciples and have prior experience that uh, you, you got to keep your eye on that, guys. I'm not saying that's where it's going. I'm saying you got to keep your eye on that. Um, with this said, I think the real question becomes, why did Jim walk away? I think what clearly happened, in my opinion, this is opinion, I think he looked at the roster, he looked at the salary cap, he looked at this rebuild and said, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. This is a long and arduous rebuild that's going to have to happen on the defensive side of the ball. And I've been in the league for 40-some years coaching. I just I ain't got it left no more. I've been coaching for 40-some years, according to, to Jim Schwartz, although he's only 50-something, so I, I, I don't know. But... I just think he looked around and said, I, I can't, I can't do it. I don't have the energy for this. I can't do it anymore. So that's what I want to talk about today, guys. I want to flip this over and I want to talk about what might have been some of the contracts and some of the situations that Jim's looking at and said, I'm done. All right, y'all. Let's get it. Scenario number one. Did maybe Jim look at John Dorsey and Howie Roseman and say, I don't trust their ability to evaluate talent. We know that the only way to rebuild this is going to come through the draft. We just ain't going to have the capital available to build it through free agency. I, I, you know, what do you want this guy to do? Go out there with, Ke you know, Kevon Seymour and Michael Jaquette as maybe your number two corner for a foreseeable future? I get it. I get it. Craig James... I, I look point number one maybe he just simply didn't trust Howie Roseman he didn't trust John Dorsey I, I think John Dorsey deserves a little credit here and a little temperance because John Dorsey is not very good at the other roles of being a general manager but he's a very good talent evaluator so you take the best of Howie you take the best of Dorsey and you hope you get a positive outcome here I'm not saying that's going to happen I'm saying it's the best case scenario um I think that could play a role, guys. I don't know. It's speculative. I'm speculating. I, I think a lack of trust in Howie Roseman could... We know that, clearly, Howie Roseman and Jim Schwartz were hitting heads over personnel decisions. So, look, both of them deserve points. I think Jim Schwartz had points about the second round and third rounds of the draft and some of the players he wanted targeted and he wanted drafted that were not drafted, and they, were, they turned out to be very good football players. And on the flip side... You know, I mean, Kyle Van Noy was a free agent at one point, I believe, and I believe Howie did want to sign him, but he wanted Brown instead last year. So we went out and signed Brown, who was a wasted free agency signing, Zach Brown. So, I mean, I, you know, meh. All right, man. Point two. Point two. 
point two is about the roster construction as it currently stands, guys. Here's one thing everyone needs to remember. We are $70,794,761 currently over the cap. This cap will not get cleared without personal sacrifice. And it's not just enough. You're not going to restructure $50 to $70 million, guys. It's not going to happen. There's not enough money to restructure that. People are going to get the axe here. I'm just going to be straightforward with you. And when you look at the defense, there are 12 players on the Philadelphia Eagles that make over a sum of $10 million. Okay? Of that 10 players, six or of those 12 players, six of them are exactly on defense. Six players. The defensive line has been this the strength of this team. But if I were to divide this team up into three distinct categories defensively, I would say there's a veteran talent pool, or called another way, a 30-plus club, those over 30 years old, and that would be Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Malik Jackson, Rodney McLeod, and Darius Slay. All guys that are susceptible via June 1st designations to be axed. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying somebody with a big salary is getting killed here. There's just no doubt about it. Fletcher Cox saves you the second most on this team behind Carson Wentz at $16 million with a June 1st designated trade or cut. The bottom line is, is people say that won't happen. Jarrell Casey had a huge year in Tennessee and then was traded away for a fourth round pick. He had a $20-some million contract when it happened. It can happen, guys. It can happen. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying that there is precedent in the league for this type of thing happening before. you got to stay aware of that. I don't know if Jim Schwartz wanted to live through a defense without Fletcher Cox in the middle. Brandon Graham. Love the guy. $17.9 million. They're not paying that. Maybe he restructures. Maybe they can find some cap space and get him in here on a Chris Long-like roll and deal. I'm not saying to completely shut the door there. But just be aware that it's $13 million saved if you cut or trade him with a June 1st designation. Nobody's probably going to trade for an $18 million contract on Brandon Graham, but you can June 1st cut him. And you can save yourself $13 million. Malik Jackson. Look, you can June 1st designate Malik Jackson for trade or for cut. I don't know how much you'd get from Malik Jackson. I do think there would be some interest on very low round picks there for a, comp- a team that's competing a team that might be pushing for a Super Bowl kind of contention next year. They might trade for a guy like Lee Jackson if it's a sixth or a seventh rounder. Maybe a fifth rounder if the Eagles are really fortunate, but I wouldn't, uh, you know, I don't know that I'd go that far. But look, he's scheduled to make $13.6 million, guys. If you can June 1st trade this kid, it's $10 million. A worst case can, scenario, you can June 1st cut this kid at $10 million. Mind you, you can only do two early June 1st designations. After June 1st, you can do as many as you like, but... Prior to that, to get there during the league counter year, you can only use that twice. The next guy, Darius Slay, scheduled to make $15.75 million. Darius Slay was very good. And yes, he just turned like 30, 31. Like he, he's still fairly young in the 30 year old thing. It's not like he's completely over the hill, per se. I'm not saying that, guys. But it needs to be aware that Darius Slay has value. I don't know what you'd get for him. We only gave up a third and fifth rounder for him. I think it's unlikely that Darius Slay would be moved, just given the circumstances. But you June 1st, you can't cut him. June 1st cut won't do anything for you with Darius Slay. But if you June 1st trade the kid, you do save yourself $12.5 million. I don't think that's a very likely situation, but it's something to be aware of. And then the second thing I would divide this team up into is what I would call the younger talent pool. When I say younger talent pool defensively, I'm talking about players like Derek Barnett, Javon Hargrave, Josh Sweat, Avante Maddox, Jannard Avery. Those are the five guys I could think of off the top of my head who still have contracts for 2021. And guys, remember that. Contracts 2021, there's a lot of expiring contracts. So, Derek Barnett, 50-year option. Right now, you can cut him. You could trade him. You don't have to even June 1st designate him. You could be a straight cut, and he saves you the full contract, the full $10 million. I think Derek Barnett might be gone. So now you're looking at a team that could be without, potentially without a Malik Jackson or a Fletcher Cox or a Brandon Graham and probably without a Derek Barnett. I'm not saying all four of those guys at the same time, but a combination of one, that, you know, like a Derek Barnett and one of those guys is likely to be gone. So now you're taking that great pass rush that you spent a bunch of money on 
and you have to get back money there. Like, it's a tough scenario, man, if you're looking at this. The second guy on this list, Javon Hargraves, $15.2 million. You can't June 1st cut him because it just doesn't do anything for you, but you can June 1st trade him for savings of 12.7. The problem is Javon Hargrave is the younger of the options here between Malik Jackson and Fletcher Cox. He's got the probability of staying around longer. We can argue and say Javon Hargraves is a good player, but probably not a $15 million player, maybe a little closer to the $10 million range. And I mean, you might have justification for that. I could see that point, but it's the value, right? And then you get guys that are between uh, the eighth and the 10th highest paid players, you know, on the roster. And those guys earn about a million dollars each. So they're, they're likely safe. They're younger talent guys, but they also have expiring contracts coming up. So this is probably the last year until we have to renegotiate them. That's Avante Maddox, who doesn't need to be outside and needs to be back as a nickel or over the top as a safety. You know, you got Josh Sweat kind of falls into that category, guys. I, you got these younger guys like that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what you want to do. Davion Taylor falls into that $1 million range. So those are your three guys, Josh Sweat, Avante Maddox, Davion Taylor. Then you got your 2020 draft guys on this roster, which is Kevon Wiles, Davion Taylor, Sean Bradley. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys that fill up the rest of this roster that would be considered undrafted rookie free agent slash practice squad slash waiver wire claimers. Surfing the value. We're looking in the value, Ben, guys. We're, we're searching the dollar general, trying to find deals here. I'm not hating on the dollar general, guys. I shop it all the time. I love it. But listen, 2019 undrafted rookie free agent, TJ Edwards. 2018 undrafted rookie free agent of the Vikings, Craig James. Marcus Epps, 2019 sixth round pick of Minnesota and a waiver wire claim for the Eagles. Raekwon Williams, 2020 undrafted rookie free agent. Graylin Arnold, uh, Michael Jaquette, all those guys are 2020 undrafted rookie free agents. Elijah Riley falls into that group of 2020s. Uh, uh, Kevon Seymour, 2016 sixth round pick of the Bills. Waiver wire claim for the Eagles, right? Joe Bocci, undrafted rookie free agents of the Saints from 2020. Rashad Smith, undrafted rookie free agent of the Bears and Cowboys in 2020. Guys, that's the roster. I'm thinking he looked at this roster, he looked at this cap situation, and he looked at Howie Roseman and said, I don't trust this situation. This is a bad situation to be in right now. I don't want to exert the effort that it's going to take to rebuild this. I mean, you know, what he probably considers to be somewhat of the twilight of his career, maybe. I mean, everyone's different. I mean, some guys can coach until they're 70-something. Some dudes went out by their late 50s or early 60s. I just think he said, I'm going to use this excuse to take a year off and then find me a better gig. I don't know, guys. You tell me your thoughts now that I've laid out some of this for you. I've laid out the veteran talent, just to go back over these names again for you. Veteran talent. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Malik Jackson, Rodney McLeod, Darius Slay. Okay? Those are your over 30 club, and four out of those five guys are making over $10 million. Rodney McLeod making $5 million, probably the better value of all these guys right now. Then you have your younger talent pool. I'm not saying these are stars or anything. I'm just saying they're younger and they're major contributors to the football team when they're on the field. Derek Barnett, Javon Hargrave, Josh Sweat, Avante Maddox, Jannard Avery. Jannard Avery are able there. I get it, guys. Um, those guys. As you look at those, two of these guys are making above $10 million in Derek Barnett and Javon Hargrave. The rest of these guys are cheaper value guys at a you know, million dollars or less, right? So Josh Sweat, Avante Maddox are making a million dollars. Uh, Jannard Avery is a little under that. He's making 920000 And then you have your undrafted rookie for agent slash practice squad guys slash waiver wire claimer, so you're, you're bargain bin guys. T.J. Edwards, Craig James, Marcus S., Raekwon Williams, Graylin Arnold, Michael Jaquette, Elijah Riley, Kevon Seymour, Joe Bocci, and Rashad Smith. That's who's under contract right now, guys, at $70 million over the cap. Once again, guys, pause on the cap. We will get an extra 19 to $20 million because the league is considering going up from $176 million as the baseline up to $195. That'll be about a $19 million increase. That'll take us to $70 to like $50 something, okay? So sure, there, there's going to be some savings here. We can definitely ask some guys to restructure. But keep in mind, guys, you're not just clearing 50 million. You got to clear 50 plus. You got to get at least 10 million of available cap space, somewhere between eight to 10 million, because you got to sign draft picks, and you still got a bargain basement shop to fill out the rest of this roster. You got to have 90 guys for camp, guys, not 40 something. So let me know your thoughts, guys.
All right, this is what I looked at when I saw the news about Jim Schwartz. I don't know, man. Only Jim, bro. Only Jim would go out like this. You got to respect him a little bit for it, man. Like, he was just like, nah, I'm done. 